You had Russell Celtics, Magic Showtime vs. Larry, MJ dominating the 90s, Kobe Shaq early 2000s, the Spurs, Cavs Warriors. Absolutely electric times. I think anybody that's a fan of basketball, even if your own team wasn't named here, could appreciate sort of these, you know, respective eras. And it's no secret things have changed kind of recently. There hasn't been a repeat champion since the KD Warriors. It's been like six teams consecutively, six new teams. And on paper, that sounds great. You know that old everybody gets a trophy. Maybe my team will be next. Parody, gotta love it. And it fits because of the new CBA and I have absolutely no interest in going into the details, but there is something called the second apron. You've heard a bunch of nerds on ESPN like Bobby Marks go into it. It's like melatonin. I mean, I think I'd rather watch C-SPAN literally. But basically, if you're a high-spending team, billionaire owners, the Steve Ballmers of the world, if you keep spending the way you are, your picks are going to get frozen. You can't use cash and trades, no buyouts, things like that. The KD Warriors broke the NBA, and this CBA is a direct reaction to that team. So now you're seeing with this CBA and these really strict rules, teams having to make very tough cuts. Why do you think Paul George got lowballed by Steve Ballmer? It's not because Steve's playing Moneyball, and Clay Thompson going to the Dallas is not because, you know, Golden State thought he was old. It's because of the CBA and this crazy tax penalty. And this is the Adam Silver NBA, and I absolutely hate it. I think it is terrible. And it's one of those things I feel as a fan, you know, careful what you wish for. Because, yeah, there will be parity. There won't be one incredibly stacked team for the next five years. But I actually think that's what makes it. Because as a fan, I believe you either want to love a team or absolutely hate them. If you're indifferent, which I believe this sort of new era could lead to, ratings are going to continue to plummet. And I said continue. High turnover is not a good thing. Some owners want to spend more than others. It's not a perfect thing. That's what makes great owners great and bad owners bad. That and I guess, you know, kicking Charles Oakley out of a game, but this is bad for basketball. I may support Boston and, you know, this could have a massive impact on them in a couple of years, but what I can tell you is as a kid, I appreciate Kobe and Shaq, not my team, the Spurs. The Cavs Warriors was such a great memory in my basketball world. Remember watching that a few years in a row? I got excited for it. And that's how fans before my time felt with Larry vs. Magic. And even Michael Jordan, because you at least took a side. If your team was in it or you liked the you know front runner, you liked Kobe and Shaq, you were excited. And if you didn't, you would hate watch. And I still think hate watching a team is way better than thinking both teams are good and the NBA wins either way. I've heard that so much. Remember last year, it was that way with Denver and Miami. And it was like the lowest rated finals of the 21st century because there just wasn't any interest. It was boring. And this new NBA creating fairness, I think is going to create a terrible product. Dynasties are a good thing. Well-constructed rosters by smart teams should not be punished because there's some moron owners out there or cheap ones that don't want to pay to play. That's just the reality here. If you can't pay or don't want to, put your team up for sale. Get out. It's honestly what the Celtics are doing right now. But this whole thing between the players and Adam Silver and the owners, all it's doing is letting the owners off the hook about not being cheap. And now the players can feel happy because there's no, you know, dominant team. But the fans, in my opinion, lose. I mean, yeah, maybe your team will win in 11 years. But what about the other 10? How will you actually feel when the NBA Finals is like Indiana versus Minnesota? On paper, you might say, oh, that's cool. Couple young teams. Teams that I may add have never won before. How cool is that? But I guarantee it. 
unless Anthony Edwards ends up being Michael Jordan, which he won't, you might not realize it, but you'll be bored because you won't have really a strong opinion unless you're a fan of either of these two random teams. That's how I feel. Parody, I believe, is good to a degree, but this has been taken way, way, way too far. Way too far. Build your teams better. Spend smart money. At the end of the day, that's what separates good teams from bad. I mean, the Suns have spent as much as anybody, but they got bounced in the first round this year. Dumb money. Bradley Beal type contracts. So I'm annoyed. I'm bummed. I'm hoping that a team can kind of figure it out. I'm hoping the Celtics can figure it out. And I hope the other great teams do too. I hope Minnesota, once everybody's, you know, contract eligible Edwards gets his money, I hope they can keep that team together. I hope OKC, the young guns, once everybody gets paid, can keep that team together. It's good for basketball. Dominance in dynasties is good for the NBA. That is what greatness is all about.